another quick episode of quick design tips and this one we're going to look at central bunkers and how to do those as well as why or where you might wish to put them um firstly i do believe these are overused i've definitely played my own part in doing that um because it's a way of signaling very clearly to the player that there are options you can go this side or this side there's actually generally a fair way that doesn't have them can tend to offer more options. There are certainly times where you want to use a central bunker in order to break up a large part of fairway. Um, sometimes it might be purely visual, that's what we're going to do on 17's placeholder, but you want to allow an option here and an option here without it looking like the fairway is giant. Sometimes it can purely be visual. Um, sometimes you may just want it on a shorter hole. I'm not sure if we have one actually. Um, yeah, again, for its kind of visual slash here, it's breaking up a layup zone to a perfect full lob wedge distance, things like that. But I think people can tend to pepper the landing zone with them, and there's generally better ways of taking away the middle of the fairway or making that the least ideal play. But let's say we did want to put one in, and let's say we wanted to put one. What I would advise you not to do is go straight to the middle of your fairway at 295, because that's the longest driver, and putting one there. Because First of all, downwind people are just going to clear it um, with that driver and you're therefore punishing the s slightly lesser hitters. Um, secondly, you probably want to pinch one side of the fairway rather than another. If I were doing this, I would probably widen this fairway a little more out here. And we'd probably still put the central bunker maybe here so that people are thinking about, well, I mean, sometimes you might want people to be able to clear it, but don't just automatically go to 295 in the middle and put it every single time. It will get very repetitive very quickly. And I'd say that you don't want to do this more than two or like maximum really three times on a course. And you'll see I've done courses where I've done it way more than that. I'm trying to do it less, but kind of video game and people hitting it perfectly dead center every single time will mean that happens. Now, okay, let's say we're leaping out of the Rainerish sort of style here. And we wanted to do, yeah, no, let's do let's do a Rainer Star bunker. So, let's say we're going to go with square bunker here. It will look terrible, but I can't think of a better way to do it. And you'll notice if you pop it dead down in the middle of the fairway, like so, you get this horrible little ring of light rough around it. It's not generally even. You can see how it's kind of narrower here than it is up here. And it's just messy, there's not much you can do about it. So what you need to do in order to make this work is really use a number of different splines. So first of all, we're going to take our fairway spine and we're going to unfill it. You're then going to do a second spline around this bunker and leave a bit more width than you think. I generally space the spline points out. Don't do loads of little ones because it can get really hard to edit those. You're then going to close that and smooth it if you want. And you've got something like that. Now you can tweak those points if you want to bring it further in, but you generally, I mean, think about if someone were mowing around a bunker, they would do it pretty equidistant. Um, so you might want to bring it in a little bit more. Um, and also with this, the good thing about doing this second fairway spline is that if I want to say, well, actually, you really don't want to be heading into here, well, I'm not going to put light rough on the inside of this. I think it would look really messy. Let's just see what it looks like kind of think that's a lot of different surfaces very close together so I wouldn't I would tend to just leave it as heavy rough personally but it's a preference now the trick is you still cannot fill this spline because it's going to fill in everything including that extra bit of fairway we just put in what you are going to do though is create either a third fairway spline you can use brushes I prefer splines brushes actually take up a little bit of object meter so and the first thing you're going to do is just trace around that bunker so, like so, and you can do this really quickly when you get used to it. Um, and then the rest of the spline, if you stick to the inside of the spline, you won't you won't really see any issues. You can see we'd already done the same here. And in that one, this is a hole that Dan designed. He actually has used life, light rough, and that's because it's part of the same fairway spine. So I'm probably going to have to redo that one at some point. But again, you make it all the way out. Keep going round. And essentially what you're doing is just tracing the inside of the fairway. And you can see we've looped around it, which means that that bit is not going to get filled in. Once you wrap your head around that as an idea, it tends to not be too difficult. 
Apologies for the baby crying in the background. We'll be with her in just a minute. So you get all the way to the end and then you hit fill spline and that is job done. And that's how you do central fairway bunkers and make them look neat. I still think the question should more often be do you need one than, than let's put one in because we can or to kind of do options. Generally, if you can specify a preferred side of the fairway and give people all the width in the world or make them use the middle camber, things like that, I think those are generally better hazards. But there's no denying that a bunker is visual in a way that a camber just isn't. And people stepping up off the tee are going to see that bunker and go, well, I definitely can't go there. So it can work really nicely. Also think about which holes you're putting it on. If it's a long par 4, do you really want us to take away the centre of the fairway? If you are using one, let's make sure that like, narrow side, I'd usually go 15 yards at minimum. Um, and then try to give a wide side of maybe double that. That tends to work really nicely, but with that, if you see going out here is going to get us over this bunker and it's a worse angle into the screen. So we would definitely want to be hitting down this side because that way we can see more of the green maybe for a back right pin actually you would want to go right of this bunker and that can be a fun little th twist that you add in so anyway that's the short tutorial i hope that it helps um do use them but just consider whether it's really really necessary